Well, our self-help week continues. I've been busy. Nice On job. Monday, I was uh, learning how to improve my chef skills. Yesterday, I was painting. Today, it's all about woodworking. And who do you turn to know how to woodwork? My buddy Vic. Vic Tesson Woodworks. Hi, Tim. Hey, buddy. Nice to see you again. How are you? Yeah, I'm really I'm well. Getting, I'm getting used to seeing you in this mask because I've been right, here a couple yeah. of times and we're only wearing these masks. That's right. I don't have an actual face. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, okay, so you're you're always great really with helping people out, spe specifically right. beginners, yes, right? Because yes. it can be intimidating with saws and oh, things sure. moving around people and not knowing what to do. You this whole room full of stuff, you don't, but you don't really. You don't. That's what, and right now you, you're doing a lot of educating, Yes. right, and helping people out just to... I don't know, get started on something. Absolutely. What's the project we're working on today? So what we're going to do is we're going to work on this little rabbited box. So I love building little boxes to put stuff into because it's just so much more elegant than plastic and pretty easy to do. Um, so we don't need a whole lot of tools for this one. And like most things with woodworking, you can use a ton of machinery or you can use all hand tools. So there's really, right. you know, there's something for everybody. You don't need all of this. Okay. 150 years ago, they had a chest of tools and that's what they worked out of. Exactly. This piece of wood. Yep. Where are you getting something like that? Well, I mean, it's Home Depot or right. Lowe's it's just a, it's just or whatever. A cheap, it's just a cheap this piece This is of wood. a one by four piece of select pine. So they sell this to trim, right? There's trim on the walls here. Right. Right. That's what it was done with. So, so even so like sometimes you, like you might just have this kicking around. Right. You know what I mean? That's yeah, what this yeah, stuff absolutely. would be good, good for, just extra wood that you use. Right. right. And like little scraps of wood are fantastic for little jobs like this. Okay. How do you know? So measuring, obviously, you've done that ahead of time for us. That's right. Yeah. So what we've got here is we've got uh, a, a, a group of boards that we've sawn into pieces. And I also mark a triangle on them so that I know what orientation all these pieces go into. Top of the triangle, bottom, left and right. So now does, one, it, does it matter? Well, it does, not so much with this wood, but if you're using really expensive wood or you've kind of like gone to that stage, okay. you get to pick the grain. What side is on the outside? What's on the inside? What's right. on the top or the bottom? So sometimes with some woods, I'll spend 20 minutes staring at these boards. That's 20 minutes. That could be some interesting segments right there. That's like, why a box costs a thousand bucks. <laughs> It takes time, we can, Tim. We can get into Vic's head. What is he really thinking about staring <laughs> la, at that? La, what? La, 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 <laughs> what is really going on in there? <laughs> That's right. Okay, next step after we cut our wood. Yep, so then what we have to do, because we it's come out of a sawmill, it's pretty rough, we have to use a hand plane. Okay. And so what we'll do is we'll get the saw out of here. Take we'll that out of, there. out of here, yeah. Okay, take that out of there. And then what we're going to do is, is we're going to use a hand plane. Now, this is a fancy metal one. It does okay? look pretty fancy. But you can also make your own. You made that? Yeah. So this is a course that we offer um, showing people how to make a wooden plane. Now, this is based on a Japanese style. So it's designed to be pulled. Okay. But really, the blade is about $50 or $60. Really? The chunk of wood might be $10 right? Versus 300 American. Exactly. Right. Okay. So there's always money shouldn't be the reason why you can't get into woodworking. There's always a way that you can and, do and it. with your with your virtual classes. Now you can come here. Yes. And all the COVID protocols, all that type of stuff. Of course. But online is also a good way to do it because then you have those videos to use however you want. Well, that's right. If you take a group class, this is all recorded. Right. And so you're able to at any point here, you'll go up against oh, okay. this stop. And we'll make sure that this is yeah the right the right side. There you go. How about I get out of your way? Kay. You hand plane. And so yeah, this can be a group class. There we go. Or you can do it individually. So what you're doing there is just removing any blemishes from the wood. You're taking off a small amount, and that is making a nice surface ready for finish. Okay. We'll continue with Vic Teslin Woodworks on Morning Live. Well, good morning. Welcome back. Big Tesla Woodworks. So we've, we've actually stepped up from a handsaw to a fancy table saw uh, as we're uh, learning how to make a nice little box. Because this is all about 
education, and it's all about confidence, Vic. Absolutely. Gaining uh, confidence, woodworking, working with wood, building things. Absolutely. And when we build boxes like this for the shop, this is an opportunity to try your skills without all the pressure, right? There's so much pressure to build something beautiful that you're so terrified of making a mistake that you sort of get locked in by it. Okay. And so by making little boxes for your shop, furniture for the shop, if it gets screwed up, who cares? It doesn't matter. Right? Paint it, call it done. Right. Right? Uh, what are we doing? Okay, so boxes need okay. bottoms. Yep. Otherwise, the stuff just falls right out. Oh, okay. okay? So what yeah. we're doing is, is we're doing a more traditional style bottom where we're actually cutting a groove that the bottom is going to live in. Okay, we could just put something on the bottom too. Oh, right? absolutely. Yeah. So in the case of this tea box, this has an applied bottom. Right. Okay, so that's just one way to do it. What's the difference? Does it? Well, really, the only time you would not want to do an applied bottom is if you're going to be storing something heavy, like when you build a box for your five-pin bowling ball collection. Right. Right. Or let's say some heavier tools. That's right. Right. Because yeah. this is actually because these little lips that you're putting in there is holding it in place. Absolutely. Better than just tiny little pin nails. And in the shop, we tend to be a little bit more sort of rough and tumble. So like we're going to throw something in there and then kind of tuck it away, right. you know, like, so it needs to be a little bit more robust. Okay, uh, table saws freak me out. Yeah, fair. Right, because, yep. I don't know, there's like sharp things there that sometimes appear and you have to be careful. Sure, with. and you don't need to use a table saw, Okay. right? 150 years ago, they didn't use a table saw. So you can use something like a router plane, right. which allows you to cut the groove. So basically this blade will project from the bottom and then eventually you just keep reduce, uh, bringing the blade down further and further and that will cut your Hardware groove. stores sell that type of thing? No, um, so you can buy commercially made ones right. from companies like Lee Valley or right. Lee Nielsen Tools or you can make your own. Yeah. Right, you just okay. get a replacement blade from one of those companies and you build your own body. <laughs> you go from a box to building one of those. Well, not quite, <laughs> <laughs> but close. Step aside, sir. Let me do this. Absolutely. All right. Uh, Safety-wise, uh, yes, very important. Ear protection, eye protection, all yes, of that. Yes, all of that. Is yep. there normally a guard there? There is typically, but because what we're doing is a through cut, we have to be able to go all the way through and not have anything encumbering here. Okay. Right. So, in this case here, this is kind of the most unsafe right. of the operations, but we make it safer by not using our bare hands to push something through because if your hands, if you slip, yeah. there's a problem. This here has a nice grippy That's surface. Right. You can put that on top of there, slide it through, and it's nice, it's as safe as it can be. Keeping that tight against there. You always sure. wanna keep that tight to the fence, yep. Tight to the fence. All right, we'll continue uh, building our box. Uh, reminder that Vic Tesla Woodworks does do a lot of virtual uh, teaching classes. You can come to the studio here too, but uh, following all COVID protocols. And we'll come, we'll come back on Morning Live. All right. There we go. You just oh, made nice a wrap. box is coming along. Morning, everybody. Back with. Uh, Vic Teslin, Vic Teslin Woodworks. Okay, what are we doing here? Okay, so what we did here is like, now we've got this box, we need some way for the sides to connect to each other, okay? So what we've done is, is we've cut these rabbits. So a rabbit is just a, a joint that's been cut. We're gonna basically excise it so that when we put this together, now it nests, okay? What's the, what's the difference if we wanted to of just not having this and just putting this like that? Right, so that's called a butt joint. Okay. Okay, and that is very common in woodworking. The only uh, thing that this gives you is this helps square everything up for you. Okay, and as well, um, there's all kinds of techniques you can use. You can use a, a nail in here if you want. Right. Traditionally, um, the Japanese would have used what's called a wooden nail, which is basically a piece of split bamboo. I've seen your wooden nails before. Yeah, that's right. So oh, they drive them right in. And then in. there's something else like this, then back to the tee box. Yep. So that's a dovetail joint. So that's sort of like the Little, fancy. That's more of, advanced. That's the more right? sexy version of this. Okay. Joint. Now, are yep. we using nails on this to put it together? No, absolutely not. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to glue this up. Okay. So glue is a very um, efficient way to put things together. Oh, so this is back to like our marks. Our triangles, right? Yeah. Triangles? So there's the left and the right mark. 
here is our top, which right. also told us where to put the groove, right? Right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of glue. What kind of glue we use? So this is this is a product called Acfix. This is just a really good quality glue. Right. Um, wood, just wood glue. Yep. Okay. Yep. Wood glue. This is my favorite kind. And basically, what we're going to do is we're going to put some glue in there. Because if you're using nails, would it splinter? That it wood? can. Right. It can sometimes. I'm just going to get these little fuzzies out of here. Okay. Well, you don't need a whole lot. People tend to really over glue stuff. And if you're over gluing it, what happens? Well, then you get a bunch of glue squeeze out and then it can get all over the outside of the box and then you end up having trouble cleaning it off and then it becomes a little bit of a nuisance. Okay, so the glue's on there yep. on both sides. How quickly do you have to secure this together? Um, you've got about 10 minutes. Yeah. yeah, people tend to get really excited when the glue starts to flow. They think that, ah, oh, their panic starts and they got to really oh, be moving. I, do little, I, don't know, I got kids, a lot of super glue going on. Oh, and yeah, yeah. Well, super glue is a different thing. Yeah, yeah. Or what was it called in the Lego movie? The key, 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 Kegel or Kick? I know. I, I should know that. You should know that. Yeah, yeah how do I know that? <laughs> All right. We'll keep that for the last segment. That's right. So there, we've got our glue in place, and then now what we're going to do, I'm going to get Speaking you... Speaking of Lego. Yeah, exactly. We're just going to put it together. Oh, but first, oh, we almost <laughs> forgot. We almost forgot, Tim. Ha <laughs> ha! We need to put the bottom in, okay? Because we can't put it in. <laughs> that was close, eh? Would have been awesome if we didn't put the bottom in because we went through that whole we, thing. The whole bottomless box. Bottomless well. box. <laughs> right. It's more of a, con like, because boxes with bottoms is like just a construct, right? Exactly. Like, it's not. Okay. Right. Well, you cl well you, you're clamping that. We'll take, a, we'll take another break. We'll come back. We'll complete our box and show the, uh, the finished product. And we'll talk uh, a, a bit more about some of the other classes you, uh, you have virtually and in person. Back with Vic Tesla and Woodworks on Morning Live. And now that our box has been sitting in the clamps for about an hour or so, mm -hmm. we can take it off. <laughs> right? So the only thing we have to do now is just make sure everything is nice and level. And a lot of times just a simple piece of sandpaper glued to a block, okay. right? And then what we'll do is, because you always want things that you're going to touch to be pleasing to the hand. And so this sharp edge is not very pleasing to the hand. So a couple of quick... Don't need much. Doesn't need much. Just, you can feel the difference even yeah. between the two. Yeah. Right? That's much nicer on the hand. And then you can also do the inside. Right? You can do the corners a little bit. You can what, do the underside. What's your self of accomplishment when you complete a task? Complete something? A simple little box or something more elaborate like they have here? Yeah, I, I just find that... Um, it makes me feel good that I built yeah. it with my own hands. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like I said, it's easy to just go to a store and buy a plastic box and put stuff in it. But this just gives you that feeling that you've made something with your hands. Well, that's the inspiration for your books, right? You got two of them. Well, absolutely. The Minimalist Woodworker. Yep. Which one's the OG? The so that was the, uh, that was the original. Right. Um, and basically, I wanted to enable people to woodwork uh, with nothing but hand tools. Because again, we talked about how it's nice to have all of these machines, but most people can't get into woodworking that way. And so... So they're just tasks, then you step them through the entire process? That's right. So this book here basically got you set up with everything you need in the shop um, to get started with hand tool woodworking. And it's, right. a pretty, it's a pretty modest set of tools. And then we started, we talked about sharpening right because that's critical yeah. but then we started talking about projects like this um, saw bench that right. you need in order to cut and we even finish with a workbench at the end of the book so that you have everything you need to get started then you can start to make some projects for your home so you got that but then you also got the virtual stuff and that's you got right. some cool virtual stuff what is what's this Vic? okay so this is a japanese style tool chest and this is going to be a class that we're going to be offering online as a group class so this What's the difference is between a Japanese tool chest? Right. So the Japanese use uh, much smaller planes and thinner saws. And so the nice thing about this is you've got a locking wedge here that you pop out. Then the lid slides back Slick. and then pops out of the way. Now, in this case here, I've got some power tool stuff, ironically stored in a hand tool chest. 
Um, oh, this is not Japanese? The, well, it might be. <laughs> Probably Chinese, if anything. Where's, where's, the, where's the actual um, the plane, the Japanese oh, plane? Oh, yeah, the Japanese plane is right here. So they would store their planes. They would have this wrapped in a protective cloth. But when they work, this plane would just sit on the outside of the box like this. And there would be a whole bunch lined up. There'd be more tools in here, and yeah. they would work. Cool. So you have a class coming up doing that? Yes. You have a class coming up doing, what's this? This is a bow saw. So a bow saw is um, a tool that basically gets used for cutting curves. So you got a nice thin blade, and then this is how you put tension on the legs. Awesome. And then you just hold it in your hand and you cut. Yeah, you're great. You love to teach too. Right? I, I do. Yeah. I really enjoy it. Yeah, well, that's why we always love to come back and see you. Great seeing you, man. Um, any of that, Vic Teslin, Woodworks, dot com. com. Yep. Yep. And all, you can send us an email at learn at um, Vic Vic Teslin Teslin com. Com. Um, all over the social medias and all that type of stuff too. You betcha. Cool. Uh, good seeing you, buddy. Okay. Good to see you. Hope to we'll be back soon. Okay. Oh, and they, we didn't even show off the tea. Look at all the teas.